Uh, yeah, welcome and welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast, Wednesday night, live. Yeah, it started off with a soft clap. Yeah, 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 I had, to, I, had to, I had to hit the slider on the mixer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that, uh, that the slider was down low, but, um, what's going on, everybody? Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you, uh, checking with us on this Wednesday night, um, well, this is our normal Wednesday night show, but uh, I think we got some pretty good topics lined up for you guys today, and uh, I'm sure we're going to get into some debate, but uh, what else is new here on the Format Podcast? It's all good. I got my guys dude. with me, of course. I got the Transformer. What's good, Transformer? What's good, my boy? Maintaining, maintaining. And of course, I got my main man, G. G, what's good? What's going on, fam? Hey, holding it down, holding it down. So, um... Yeah, we got uh we got some good topics. Uh, y'all want to wait a couple minutes? See if we get a see if we get a couple more people in the chat before we start uh, going. Yeah, man, get these folks ready. Get these folks awake. <laughs> All right, tune in. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. It's the it's pick 'em time. It is pick 'em time. That's it right. Pick 'em time. It is pick 'em time. Man, I, I tell you what, um, these are some good topics tonight, man. I, I think um I think we're going to uh, definitely have some good discussion on these, man. This um. Psst. Your man Aaron Rodgers, man. Oh no, oh, I'm no. have to dial back my temperament on that one. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, man, that, uh, yeah, I'll get to it, man. That's that's just definitely, crazy. definitely. Yeah, Stephen that's A. Smith crazy. out here with the BS, really disturbing. Really speaking disturbing. facts. He's not speaking no facts, man. Speaking facts. He's not speaking facts, and we'll, we'll get to it. I could be objective I, of LeBron James, but I could respect. I can too. At the same time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm a grease the skids to get my kid in this mug. Goddamn Skippy, man. <laughs> All right. Salute, we'll Steve. Go. Yes, sir. We'll definitely, definitely talk about that. I'm looking forward to that topic. And then, of course, <laughs> is Lamar Jackson already top five all time? Whoa. Yeah. We, we know who's warn uh... everybody before we even get started <laughs> on that conversation. Like, this is G's segment. That's going to be G's segment alone. I'm just mm-hmm. going to let that man cook. <laughs> Uh, no, it's if actually a good to topic. And and be like, hey man, G, am I alive? Can I chime in? Hey, it's it's, it's actually up? worth it's ahead, actually man. worth the discussion because uh Lamar is a he's one of the most special players we've ever seen. It's actually worth the discussion. So yeah, looking forward to having that one too. Sid Bubba, what's cracking? Man, said his boys is in the building. We in the house. There it is, there it is. We in the house. There it is. Um, all right, I guess we we'll go ahead and uh we'll we'll get it um uh, we'll get it going. Uh all right. Um so NCAA as we mentioned we got some, proves elimination of the again? national letter of intent. So, yeah, but, man. Yeah, I, I thought that was very interesting. They just got um, rid of the national letter. I saw that. I saw that. Let's hang on one second and we'll get right to that. But before we get started, y'all. You know what time it is. You know what you got to do. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio-only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't wait. all right Ooh, here we go. I think I think uh I think some people might have been waiting for this topic, fellas. What y'all think? I I'm curious <laughs> about the topic. I don't even know what we're about, about to talk about. So I'm not worry about to talk about man. I sent you, I sent you the B roll in, in the chat, man. Oh wait, did you? Yeah, yeah man. What? Yo, hey, I sent you all that earlier. We communicate man. before the show. What? That's what we're doing, huh? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um Side for military service. Wait, what was that? Uh, side for military service. I'd fly into BWI to be at the parade. Nothing would stop that. No offense to those who went. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. If you want, uh, if you wasn't alive, yeah, that's 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 different. Leave with that, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Right? Leave with that. <laughs> I yeah, say that man. about all them Dallas Cowboy fans, man. Man, we won all them championships back in the nineties, but you hey. were born in ninety-seven. Mm-hmm. That means you've been a loser all your life. <laughs> Damn. 
I said that my little brother's a uh, Dallas Cowboy fan, so I'm gonna mm. save this clip for him. I love you, John John. <laughs> so I'm saying you did. so so that means that means I don't get all those um Celtics in the in the sixties and you don't get all those Showtime Lakers either, do you? Nah, but I do get five, <laughs> six championships since then, since my uh, uh yeah. arrival on Earth. So I mean I can say that. Yeah, right. six what, what man, I got, man. 78, sorry. Three, I, I got five. I got five since I've been yeah. alive. Six, six, I'll take that into five. All right, go ahead. 18 better than 17. But anyway, let's do this, man. <laughs> hey, you, hey, Tyler said you can't claim that goddamn 18, okay? <laughs> you right, can't right. claim it. You wasn't alive. Right, fair man. enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, let's get to it. So so here, um, uh, third topic of the night, obviously, Stephen A. Smith, man. This dude. <sighs> This dude, it, it's so funny, man. He continues, like, obviously he knows where the bread is buttered. This guy continues to carry the water for LeBron, LeBron and Clutch. And it's just, like, some of the stuff he says is just crazy, right? And where am I going with this? So, obviously, we know no that idea. Ronnie James was drafted in the second round, with pick 55 um, in the last NBA draft. We also know that his dad made that happen so that they could play together on the same team. Cool. We've had this talk before. Um, I have said from the beginning that in my estimation, this was never about Bronny. This was all about LeBron and his legacy and the photo op. And that doesn't mean he doesn't love his son. Of course, we know he loves his son. That doesn't mean he doesn't want the best for his son. Of course, he wants the best for his son, right? Most fathers do. That said, I've said from the beginning that I felt like LeBron being the most self-centered superstar we've ever seen, probably in any sport, the reason that he was so adamant about this happening before he retired is because he wanted it to add to his legacy, especially for, you know, his, uh, his freaking, uh, his freaking fan base so that they could say, well, he was so good for so long that he could play with his son. Jordan never played with his son. You wouldn't believe how many places online I've seen. Well, did Jordan play for his sons? Jordan could have gotten his sons in the league. He could have pulled that off, but you know, that's not how he was moving. But anyway, that's not, it's not about Jordan. But the point is now we see that, we saw uh, we saw uh, Bronny. Excuse me, I forgot his name for a second. How could I forget his name? Right? Anyway, I don't know. It's literally right, on repeat. Right. I know, right? It's literally on repeat. So we saw Bronny get drafted. We saw him go through the summer league. What a big deal that was! And of course, a couple of weeks back or last week was it? We saw him go through the whole media day thing, which which got us into a long and protracted discussion slash debate on this show about that and what a father would and should do, and uh, you know what makes a good father. Blah blah blah. All this stuff, right? So we got into all of that. And um, so uh, Stephen A. Smith, I think yesterday was on first take and he and Shannon were talking about it and uh, basically, you know, giving props to LeBron for doing what he did, getting his son drafted, getting his son into the league. And like I said, from the beginning, I, tr I don't truly believe that this is Bronny's dream. Right. Bronny, I think he's under some pressure because one, he's got his father's name. His father built this empire. This is what his dad wants. He's been hearing this since he was in, what, eighth grade, that his dad wants to play with him in the league. So there's that subliminal conditioning, right? Uh, I think no matter what we think, we can't argue that. <laughs> Nino, what's good, brother, man? Thank you so much. Appreciate the Super Chat fam. Appreciate you always. Um, trust me, I am very sure that Young Disciple is listening, and I'm sure we're going to get a call from him. <laughs> and, and I love that because he's, he's so passionate, and that's what we need are, are those different voices on the channel, man. That's awesome. Um, e, what up? What up, Hellhound? What's good, bro? Good to see you in here, fam. Um, G, you see who's in the chat, man? Yeah, I see him. Yeah, What's going on, bro? Hellhound right there. Always, always for life. But um, uh, yeah, where were we? Um, so yeah, um, so this whole thing, if we remember, Bronny said it openly in the media. You know, it's never been my dream to play with my dad. It's always been his dream. So we know, we know what that is, right? And so, again, I think there's some media pressure. There's James family pressure. There's LeBron, his dad pressure. There's I've got this guy's name pressure. There, there's a lot going on there. Does that mean he doesn't love playing basketball? No. Does that mean that he maybe didn't eventually want to be in the NBA? Probably not. But at the same time, with all that pressure, maybe he didn't want to be in the NBA. I'm not saying he did or he didn't. It's just worth thinking about, right? With all that kind of pressure, maybe he says, yo, I just want to do something else, man. I'm, I'm hooping. And I like hooping, but it doesn't mean everything to me like it did to my dad. It's not everything. It's not my way out. I grew up rich, right? So anyway, um, Stephen A had some comments to make that really rubbed me the wrong way. Pause. 
um, talking about, uh, well, let's hear them. And then we'll come back and discuss it because I'm sure you're all going to have a lot to say. And so will I. But yesterday was particularly special because we were all witnesses to history. It happened at the start of the second quarter when Bronny, LeBron's son, checked into the game and joined his father on the basketball court. This marked the first time in history that a father and son played together in an NBA game. Now, here's the deal. I've noticed, I'm sure y'all have noticed, that many people have been critical of the fact that Bronny is on the team to begin with. But guess what? I'm not one of them. I want to say this because it's important to point this out, okay? I will be critical of LeBron James when it's called upon. He is not the GOAT in my estimation. It will always be Michael Jordan when compared to him. I have LeBron at number two. That's number one. The other part about all of this is that, you know what? You want to shoot jump shots instead of going to the hole. You're, you're reticent or hesitant to get to the free throw line in critical moments. I'm going to get on him about that too, which I have in the past. No need to do that now because he ain't scared to do that anymore the way he was earlier in his career. But it doesn't negate the fact that this is one of the greatest players to have ever played the game of basketball. He is on the Mount Rushmore of basketball. And on top of it all, what he has done for the game is immeasurable. And my appreciation for LeBron James and our appreciation collectively as basketball fans should always be, as he would state, surreal, to say the least. It is a damn travesty that you got people running their damn mouths, acting like it's a problem that he got his son on the team. We're now learning, based off of numerous reports that have come out the last few days, that the Golden State Warriors were contemplating grabbing Ronnie James at the 52nd overall pick but passed on doing so in order to respect the wishes of LeBron James because they knew that the Lakers had the 55th pick and that Bron LeBron James is going to make sure that the Lakers grabbed him. Ladies and gentlemen, LeBron has earned this. Bronny has something to prove. Bronny has something to earn. He's got to put forth the work and the effort over a lengthy period of time to show that he's worthy of being in the NBA. All of that is true. But in terms of the skids being greased, Pardon the phrase. So Bronny James could be on the Lakers as opposed to another NBA team. Why is that a problem? Coaches do that. Executives do it. There's a whole host of folks in the, throughout the world of sports that facilitate things, that engage in a level of nepotism that we all notice because it's flagrantly obvious. Are you kidding me? Bron James has earned it. He has earned our respect, our reverence, our deference, our appreciation for us to look at something that he wants and say, excuse me, can we do that for him? Yes, we can. Not just the Lakers, but NBA fans everywhere. Yes, we owe it to LeBron James to be receptive and courteous enough to appreciate the fact that he wanted to wear the same uniform playing on the same basketball court as his son and that he did what he could to make that happen. If he were not so great, if he were not so phenomenal, if he was not such a winner, he would not have been able to pull this off. Talk your shit, Stephen A. Go ahead, Bruce. What you got, man? Go first. Go first. Talk yeah. your shit, Stephen A. Okay. This is your Lakers, bro. Huh? These your, these oh, you your Lakers, go, you go, oh, you going you gonna let me start? Yeah, okay. These your Lakers. These your Lakers they talking about. Hey man, listen. I like how it's always a problem when somebody finally says something decent about LeBron. If you look at Stephen A. Smith, right? And let me finish, Bruce. You're giving me the I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. If he was born that way, then he all the time, bro. Right? He do it all the time, man. I'm waiting for y'all. I'm waiting for y'all. Damn, I didn't say anything. Go ahead. <laughs> Your face said it all, man. That's okay, <laughs> but I'm letting you speak. I didn't interrupt you. Listen, whenever something happens in the regular season, right, Stephen A is always there to criticize LeBron, right? Stephen A does. Stephen A criticizes LeBron um, when he doesn't take the last shot. He criticizes LeBron um, if he, he decides to pass the ball. Stephen A clearly has a double-sided sword when it comes to talking about LeBron. But if you hear about what this man said, right, he said the same thing that I said the last segment. He's talking about the fact that that man did what he had to do to get his son 
next to him on that bench, right? He's applauding that. He's he's acceptive of, hey, Braun, you got a son, your son, um, watch your son come up from a baby, Facts. dribbling that basketball on the court, come up on that court. Now he has the ability to grab his son. Yes, people poach to get their kids and stuff in these high higher up uh, positions every single day. So he's like, yo, look, I would have <laughs> did it too. Stephen A said, Stephen, I would have did it too. That's that's what Stephen A really saying. Because I'm Stephen A got a kid. He's like, yo, you want this job? Cool. All right, we're gonna do it. A, B, and C and D, and we're gonna make sure you get this job. Right? I like what Stephen A said, man. I mean, I, I, that's clearly what I've been saying all along. It's a good thing, hey, bro. It's a it's a positive thing. What what's negative about this man getting his son in the league, bro? I don't see nothing negative. He's the 55th pick. If this man was drafted in the first round, I would be singing a different tune. I'd be singing a different tune. He's literally five picks away from being undrafted, bro. Five picks. Literally. That's the difference, right? I'm not going to, you know, talk crap um, and, and, and do this whole charade of going back and forth on whether or not he deserved it. That is soon to be found out because we don't know if any 55th pick deserves it ever. <laughs> In NBA history, we ain't looking at the 55th pick to be the next Le LeBron James, the next, um, I almost said Ronnie Coleman, Jesus Christ, um, Ron, uh, Ron Harper, uh, anybody uh, um, that's been at an uh, elite level, right? So I, I like what he said, man. He's he's saying what I said. Hey, I, hey, that boy got his son on there. Hey, I'm proud of that. Cool. That's it, man. Go ahead, All right. G. All right. So – so first and foremost, um, Michael Jordan is my goat, right? Um, I got to put that disclaimer out there first and foremost. Um, Stephen, they did say that too. That's his goat, right? Yeah, Respect. yeah, yeah. I said it first, right? Like <laughs> but the, the last, the last show we had, me yeah, and you, we kind of, we kind of shared similar sentiments when it came, to, you know, LeBron and his son playing on the same team. Like I've never been a really, I've always been hypercritical of LeBron and his gameplay, but now I kind of see you at the end of the road. With his career, if he did try to do some stuff like this maybe five or ten years ago, um, granted that couldn't happen because his son, you know, is 19, I think, something like that. That couldn't happen, but let's say for instance, it did. Yeah, if it did, um, I think then it would probably burn everything down. But because he's he's on his way out and he's doing it, it's almost as if he's passing the torch to his son, right? He's he's pretty much hey, stand here so we can take this picture. Move here, you know, so we can take this picture. Um, so for them, it's almost like that that victory lap for him, right? That he's able to do the, the things that he's doing right now. Um, yeah. I, I always said that the reason why I believe that um, this is a great thing for him is because his son had a heart condition, right? And he, he almost freaking died, right, on a basketball court. And so um, if the kids still want to play and you got the influence to do it, you know, Rich Paul pretty much got the NBA on lock, right? He has the NBA on lock, and so they made a deal. They got it done. Um, that's what it is. That's all I got with, with this with this one, though. Uh, this one thing I had. You know, Stephen A. kind of did a really good job of kind of amplifying things that we said already, right, Um, about the sun. And, but, you know, he kind of targeted some of the media by saying, you know, how dare you, like, speak up to this. And so I think that's what really like is lighting, is fanning the flames on this because that you know a lot of people don't agree with it. Um, yeah, but there are some people that do. So that's all I got. Hey, first of all, before right. we go any further, man, shout out it's Sid Bubba. That's what Super I was about chat. to do. Appreciate hey, man, we appreciate man, it. Appreciate you. That's love. Any moment, that's any right. moment, Bruce's gonna get hot enough. That freaking Wi Fi is gonna go out again. <laughs> that Wi Fi, <laughs> that router will <laughs> smoke. He's about to smoke that router, yo. That's <laughs> <laughs> get cooked. Then, Bubba, you don't know you're doing this man a, a service, uh, right? Man, we, we $20 away from the new router, man. We $20. Thanks. <laughs> appreciate you, Sid Bubba. Thank you for the love and the support, man. Definitely appreciate it. Yo, you. Brandon, yo, what up, yo. Me? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, you're absolutely right. LeBron is flaunting Bronny for the father-son same team to draw more attention to himself. That's what I have said. How can from you the draw beginning. more attention when you got it all already? No, 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 no. He always needs more. Just like his teammates, he always needs more. But that's cool. That's cool. 
So um, first, let me let me respond to something G said here. Right. And this is something I didn't actually get back to last time we were having this discussion. So G has been consistently mentioning heart condition, heart condition, heart condition. How are you missing the opposite side of that heart condition argument? And the opposite side is this. When I say LeBron is the most selfish superstar we've ever seen, the most self-centered, most narcissistic, egotistical, y'all push back on that. Cool. But you keep bringing up heart condition. He almost died hooping, right? You said that, right? I want to make sure I got that correct, right? Yeah. Heart condition, he almost died hooping. So that said, for his own, for his own legacy and legend, he's going to put his kid possibly in harm's way again. A kid who almost died hooping with a heart condition, which we've acknowledged, he gonna push him back out there again because this is what he wants. I want my son to play with me. So you don't see anything wrong with that. You keep bringing up heart condition and almost well, died. I think he had to be cleared it at to one play side. Too, Bruce. I think huh? he had to be cleared to he had to be cleared to play, Bruce. Of course, he had to be cleared to play. But Reggie Lewis got cleared to play too. Reggie I'm just, Lewis I mean, got cleared to play. I'm hey, just guys, telling you the facts. Uh, and, I'm the telling facts. You the, and I'm telling you the facts. Reggie Lewis got cleared to play. He died on the court. Frank Gathers got cleared to play, died on the court. Both of these guys, heart conditions, right? They love the game, heart conditions. Almost yeah, died, yeah. right? They did die. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm trying to make, as you keep referencing the heart condition, which I'm not even going to say you don't have a point. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying how you only see in one side of this. You're seeing this. Well, I, I mentioned this. the heart condition, and I went, I mentioned um, uh, Reggie Lewis. Was it Reggie Lewis? Reggie Lewis, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned him last time we had this conversation, and so I see what you're doing. You're going the other side of it. I, I, I say this, man. Like if if he wants to play, he's a grown man, right? Mm -hmm. He can say no to his father. He's a grown man. No, he can't. He, I don't think he can. The same way Reggie Lewis suited up the, the love of the game. He knew he had a heart condition way before you know he died on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, right? But mm -hmm. at the same mm -hmm. time, um, he knew that. But for the love of the game, he still wanted to play basketball, and so that's what he did. That's just to to for this sport, these these yeah. guys look at themselves as you know warriors, right? Of the sport, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. like the way we paint them in, a, in these guys are warriors. They shoot up mm -hmm. and they play regardless. But you you saw the, uh, the some of the, the, the pictures that I sent you or memes mm -hmm. I sent you, with, yeah. you know guys playing with neck braces and shit like that back in the day. And so that that was a sign that you were, you were tough, that you were tough, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to get away from the point. The point is that mm -hmm. Stephen A kind of doubled down on, you know, the Brownie and LeBron father son mm -hmm. duo on the basketball court. He didn't really say they was going to, you know, win anything. We don't that's know. Not, this still might, he point. still might not get out of preseason, bro. And, so and it's just, he, a, I, let, just because let, just because he said it don't mean he was right. And I got a bunch of notes that I made while he was talking because I wanted to make sure I remember the stuff. But go ahead. Well, I feel like I'm get smoked. Oh, well, let, let, let's respond to Brandon Bryce because I'm not going to let mm -hmm. Bruce slide with just putting post up here, right? Bro, I'm just saying he's right. About the father son, same team. We've already seen it with mm -hmm. King Griffey Sr. and mm -hmm. Jr. Why is this time so special? Are we mm -hmm. serious about that question? Dead serious. Ken Griffey was Ken Griffey way better than Bronny will ever be. Like, was he the top five player in baseball? Ken Griffey? Ken Griffey Sr. Senior. No, 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 no. Wasn't no. he? Crazy. He no. wasn't. So he wasn't no. a face of baseball at all, right? No. Okay. No. Is LeBron? Yes. The current face of ba basketball. I think I'd argue that. Probably, yes. arguably in the GOAT conversation. Is Ken Griffey Sr. in the GOAT conversation? No. No. Let's Come on now. Let's not be dumb. No, but, but, but the difference we is. We know why it's special. Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. was way better than Ken, than LeBron, than Bronny James will ever be. <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr. was we a monster. We found that out when? No, no, we no. We found that out when? No, no. They, they knew that from the beginning. This wasn't any we hope we can see. Um. Like with Bronny, we hope that we can see him maybe one day possibly become an all-star or an all-defensive guy, right? Everybody knew Ken Griffey Jr. was different. He was special. He was that guy. So, nah, that, that's different. So, so at the time, at the, time, time, the, 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 at the, time, the Griffey name didn't have really mu not much merit to it on the same level as the James name. Can it, we agree on that? Well, it's two different it didn't. Split, though. I think the merit it's is two different flipped. Sports. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not mistaken, I'm not a baseball guy, and I'm not going to go too much further into this. But if I'm not mistaken, Ken Griffey Jr. coming into the league was coming into Major League Baseball with the same type of fanfare LeBron James came into the NBA with. If I'm not mistaken, but Ken not Griffey, what he has Ken now. Jr. Was that special, Jr. but not what he Jr. has now. No, but that's okay, what I'm saying. That, that's it's my flipped. point. It's flipped. 
But but what Brandon is saying is that we've we've seen the father son thing before, so it's not like it's brand new. We haven't seen it in the NBA, but I, I totally get what he's saying. So that's another got, reason why you, you got one that was great and one that wasn't. You, same thing you're gonna have with the with the James gang. One that's great and one that isn't. So exactly, exactly. Thank you, B. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing in reverse. They knew Junior was that dude. So you know it's. All right, but but let's move on because but, but, but the question was the like, why is it so hype? I mean, duh, that that's why that's what I'm saying. That's why it's hype. James is by far one of the greatest players of his generation. Mm -hmm. He played the game long enough, and I'm not finished. Like I'm not putting up stats and boosting LeBron, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. he played long enough mm -hmm. to where he's still fucking good. And well, his son is in the league. That's why it's so special to the NBA. And of course, the NBA is going to market it that way because guess what? They're going to get revenue off of this. Yeah, yeah. So of okay, course, I get it's going to be part. special. I get the I get the money piece. I get the money piece. But what what really what really got to me was, and it's the same insinuation that if you don't see it the way, um, if you don't see it the way you know you guys see it, or a lot of other people see it, oh, you're a hater and this, that, and the third. But cool. Let me let me address some of Stephen A.'s specific points here. Okay, so he says we, we're going to witness the history, right? And definitely to your point, Transformer, as a Lakers fan, I get it. And I'm not going to say this again, but I love it for you. I love that you guys are going to make history once again, because what do I always say? When the Lakers are great and the Celtics are great, it makes basketball great, right? So I have no problem with that. Yeah. Obviously, we want to beat you guys on the floor, but I love it when you guys are great and we're great at the same time. So that's that's wonderful for the sport. So I got no issue there. So I totally get why you love it, right? But like, you, you, you look at this, and for instance, this is to me, I always talk about how selfish LeBron is. Go ahead and tell me when's the last time you saw LeBron anywhere near pressuring an inbounds pass, right? You know what that was? Come on, let's get this photo op. That's what that was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? LeBron hasn't been near the inbounds pass in years, but he made sure he got down there next to my son. So, you know, this is surreal. Let me get this picture, right? That's what it is. So, like, let's stop it. But that's cool. That's cool. That's that's the first point I'm trying to make when Stephen A is talking about making history, because, again, this is more about LeBron than it is about Bronny. And no one is ever going to be able to convince me otherwise. Why? Because of what we've seen for the last more than 20 years. But cool. Moving on now. Um, why did Stephen A have to announce? Well, I'll be critical of LeBron at times. Why? Because everyone acts like it's such it's such an earth shattering meteoric event. If someone is critical of LeBron. Why is he the only person, him and now his son, that we can't be critical of? Why? We got to stop this. We got to stop this. It's absolutely ridiculous. So he has to announce, well, I'll be critical at times, but not today. Really? Why, why not? Why not? I think he's saying that because he's saying like, hey, I'm, I criticize him when it's due, and I also give him praise when it's due. That's what he's saying. He's like, yeah, I, I'm here to tell you, Michael Jordan is my GOAT. Let me go ahead and start off with that. So there's no, I'm always going to bash that conversation. He hasn't done nearly enough to pass Jordan. So F all the Jordan conversation when you talk about GOAT period when it comes to LeBron James, right? But he's also saying like, hey, like I'm not just being a LeBron fanboy. I cook this man too. I cook this man on my show. I cook him. So, but at this point, I'm going to give him praise because yeah. I like to see what's happening right now in front of me. Go ahead, Bruce. He, he, he doesn't cook him. He responds when he's got no choice, when it's certain things are so obvious. He, he doesn't cook LeBron. He go, he does everything he can possibly do to avoid being critical of LeBron. When it's super obvious and he has to say something, he'll say it, but he doesn't cook LeBron. We got to stop that. Deontay Oscar, what's good, man? I think you're new to the chat. Make sure you click that like and subscribe. Most hated basketball player of all time. Yeah, I got to disagree with you on that, buddy. That sounds ridiculous because I guarantee you nobody ever broke in LeBron's house, broke his trophies up, crapped in his bed, and smeared defecation on the wall. So we can when stop all is? this most hated basketball player of all time. Crap. I'm so sick of hearing this nonsense when it comes to LeBron. All right? LeBron you said never that because he got anywhere. better security that LeBron, you can't get into his house LeBron and do that? never went anywhere and couldn't stay in the same freaking <laughs> hotel that his teammates stayed in or couldn't eat in the same restaurant that his teammates ate in. Most hated basketball player of all time. We got to stop this. We got to stop this. I don't care if you weren't alive then. It doesn't change the truth of what the truth is. All right? So there's that. All right? Who is? The great Mr. Russell is the most hated basketball player of all time. Let's try that. You can go do your research. I don't have to tell you about it. It was all right. race, racist era back then, but I get what you're saying. Right. But 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 that's what it's disingenuous. Oh, LeBron, the most hated back. No, he's not. 
He's also the most loved. And if we're going to say that, okay, fine. He's the most loved basketball player of all time, too, for whatever strange reason. But anyway, um, moving right along. And, and I'm just going down the line with the notes I took while Stephen A. was talking. All right? Stephen A. says, we must respect him and, and revere him and give him whatever he wants for all that he's done for the game. Let's be real here. Let's be real. What realistically has he done for the game? He's made the league a lot of money. He's made the league a lot of money. But what has he really done to improve the game? He's he's created. He started this player empowerment era that really has hurt the game. What has he honestly done to improve the game? You tell me. All that he's done for the game. I'll wait. He said that, not me. What are you asking us for? Oh, okay, cool, cool. So I'll, I'll go right on. <laughs> you're talk, you're, whole, you're replying to Stephen A., not us, man. Oh, okay, cool. No, I'm just obviously, you know, because since you all are on the same team with him right now, it's all good. Because you got this whole everything he's done for the game. I parts of what he said and agree with it. I didn't. I didn't agree. You didn't hear me repeat what you're talking about now. But go Mm -hmm. ahead. No, that's because I took notes. That's because I took. I don't play around with this stuff. I take notes while people (laughs) is talking because I I got a bad short term memory. I'll forget stuff when I'm responding. All right, next. So he says, "Oh, people got the nerve to run their damn mouth." And what? Wait a minute. Hold on. To quote (laughs) the great John Amos, Cleo McDowell, "This America, Jack." All right. How about that? I can say what the hell I want to say. This is America. You're telling me now I don't have the right to my opinion because it's dissenting from yours? Are you serious, bro? Are you serious? Stephen A must be out his damn mind. Tell me I, a grown man, college educated, father of two, husband for how many years, right? So I served my country and all that. Matter of fact, all three of us served our country. Why? So we can have the rights that we have, right? So I can come on here and talk my ish as you say, right? I can say what I want to say, you know, within reason, of course. So now, because my opinion, when it comes to LeBron, may be dissenting, I got to close my damn mouth. I can't talk. Man, you must be crazy, Stephen, eh? Why? Because I'm not taking them clutch checks like you are? Nah, bro. Nah, we're not having that. This is America. I can say what I want to say. And what I'm saying is he's the most selfish, egotistical superstar we've ever seen. And that's true. You can, you can love him as a player, and that's gravy. But nobody can deny that he makes move after move, which if you look at it objectively and fairly throughout his career, it's because he's selfish. And that's cool. All right, cool. Next up, LeBron has earned this, Stephen A said. What? 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 He has earned the right to manipulate situations in the game? Really? He's earned that? I, I, like, what, what exactly has he earned, right? Because we talk about it. Michael Jordan had two sons who played Division I basketball and were both better than LeBron's son. He could have gotten his, his son's at least one of them, I think. He could have gotten them into the league. He never did that, right? Yeah, the one that slept with Pimpin' Right. I mean, Pimpin' Baby Mama? Yeah, that or whatever Marcus, I believe. Think yeah, about Marcus, this, right? Marcus, yeah. So think about this. Um, freaking, uh, when it comes to it, uh, Michael Jordan, he could have gotten, he tried to get um, one of his, I think the same Marcus, I think one of his sons at least, he tried to get him to play for North Carolina. Obviously, we know Michael Jordan's the most famous Tar Heel ever. Cool. He tried to get him to play there. You don't think he could have pulled and used his influence to get him on that team? You don't think so? But Roy Williams told Michael, Michael, sorry, you know, he's, he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's not good enough. And Michael accepted that. Why? Because he loves and respects the game more than himself. The game means more to him than him. LeBron is all about him. He's not about the game. He's about what the game has done and will continue to do for him. He's not about the game, right? Again, Not my opinion. All we have to do is watch what we've seen from this guy for the last 22 years. This is not my opinion. All you have to do is go back and look. And that's one thing about me. I don't make stuff up. Oh, Steve, great point. Great point. Okay, there we go. Shaq's son had a heart condition also. He didn't leverage his kid a roster spot on the Lakers. He didn't. And guess what? His son was better than Bronny. Yes, he was on the Lakers, but go ahead. No, he, he played on the Lakers G League squad. Um, I don't know if he ever actually suited up for the Lakers, but I think he had I to think, stop playing because of his heart too. So, so, so that's the point, right? Shaq didn't push it and say, "Oh, my son got to get a spot, and my son got to come out here and play." He didn't do all that, right? Why? He got him a look because he, because he knew because he knew what his son had a heart condition, right? G, you like pushing the heart condition thing. He had a heart condition, but so his son able- said he wanted to keep playing, so that's no, why he I, still kept going. I understand. So we're gonna bash that, like we bash, I mean, like you want to talk you, about LeBron, you, like you're okay, not, you're take not, your son out of the situation. It's, you're it's not understanding what I'm saying. He didn't push it. 
His son decided that he wanted to play. LeBron. So how do you know Bronny isn't play, like doing that? Because, because we not, because you didn't see him say it. Because we heard Bronny say this is his dream, not mine. We heard we play together. Oh it's his God. dream. That man never said I didn't want to play basketball. That's two different things, bro. I'm, two no, things can I'm, be true. What I'm saying is he said that it's his it's, it's his dad's dream to play together. Now, I don't to know. To play if, together. That's his, that's his yes, dad's yes, dream. Yes, and that's, that, that's that had nothing to do with him mm -hmm. saying I want to play the game of basketball. Okay, cool. I want so, to be in the NBA. Cool. So I want to play the big. Uh, let's let's say that that's the case. He wants to play the game of basketball. He wants to be in the NBA. Then why did LeBron still push it and make sure everybody knew them? Don't draft him. Why? Why? Because he, LeBron Sr., wanted to make sure that LeBron was there playing with him. And why is that? Why? Why? Not for Bronny, for LeBron. Well, you don't think you did the same thing. Go ahead, G. You don't think none of this was part of like an NBA plan? No, like, this is not the NBA plan. This is LeBron's plan. This has to be part of the NBA plan. Oh, I'm pretty sure the NBA got this. Yeah, shit. I mean, I'm yeah, not going to say the NBA that. doesn't yeah. love it. Yeah. I'm not going to say the NBA doesn't love it. Of course they do. Why? They got everybody in the world from small channels like mine to freaking Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, and everybody else talking about it, right? So, of course, they love the publicity. And listen, don't get me wrong. As much as I'm sitting here talking about it, saying I'm against it, guess what? Opening night, what, what channel will my TV be on? Whatever channel that game is on, right? Because why? We, we have to watch it. It's a major sports story. We got to cover it. We got to talk about it. I get it. I get it. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is I did not like at all the way Stephen A. Smith came at people as if no one is allowed to have a dissenting opinion. And I thought it was absolutely absurd the way he's going to sit here, carry LeBron's water and lie to us and tell us that LeBron has done so much for the game, which, again, no one's been able to, to kind of even explain to me what that is. Right. And lie to us and tell us why LeBron should have whatever he wants and how he's really and how he um how he's uh he has earned the right to do whatever all right so here's another thing y'all um remember when uh especially g g was saying how basically everybody every father he knows would do the same thing and he was saying how um he was saying how he thinks that's a good thing for fathers to do right and i'm like well no not every father because i wouldn't do it and i believe in making my son earn things right so uh, this is interesting. I'm going to play this little clip here. You won't see it on the screen, but because uh, I, I didn't make the thing, but um, I'm going to play this little clip and you guys will hear it. And I think it's interesting. So uh, I was on YouTube and a oddly enough, a parenting podcast came across my timeline. I don't know how it came up uh, and it had to do with LeBron and Bronny, but this is interesting. So check it out and then we'll come back and respond to it. Go ahead, start that up. You remember we did our videos a few months ago and the question I asked or proposed was that LeBron, the father, take the emotion out of whether you like him as a basketball player and his dynasty or not. Was he doing the right thing for his son, Bronny, by highly lubricating the slide to the NBA and getting him on the Lakers with a big contract and now he's going to be a teammate? Two things as we come into training camp. One, the rumor is he'll be on the G League team for the Lakers to get playing time, which is for those that don't know, kind of like the minor league team. Even though he signed a major a pro contract, they can put him in the minor league basically to work on his game, which I think would be great. Just take the spotlight off him. Let him actually become a better player and see if he can play in the NBA based on his skill set, not who his father is. But the other thing that kind of triggered me a little was if you don't agree that LeBron has done the right thing, you're a hater. And that's coming from LeBron with what he puts out in his pictures with his kid and his speeches. And I found that as a father, if you're just giving a critique or an opinion on, hey, how much should I help my son along in life, you know, the nepotism part or the skill part to get a job. If you say, like I did, well, I don't think I'd go that far, crossing the line as putting him on the court type thing. It's, it's one thing to make a phone call or get him a workout or pull a string, but I would not have gone that far. You're a hater. So that's an interesting kind of narcissistic gaslight where if you don't agree with LeBron's decision and Savannah, his mother's decision on this route, then you hate them. And I found that interesting because generally when people call you a hater and you're using parent logic and father opinion, then they, there's something where they know maybe what they did isn't right, right? Because they can't debate you on the fact or why. They'll just call you a hater and move on, which, by the way, the entire world is doing right now with politics. So if you don't agree with someone or you say, I don't think I would have done that. Oh, you're a hater. You're just a hater. Like, no, I'm giving an opinion on would I have done that for my child to the extent you would have. I don't think it put 
Bronny in the best position for success moving forward. But if you say something like that, you're just a hater now. You hate them, which is totally not true. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. What was um, the goal here with that, with that, with that clip? What was the goal? What was so you really don't you have no idea why I played that clip? Hmm. Not not really. <laughs> Y'all really don't be listening okay. when I'm talking. Yeah, no, that's crazy. I, that's yeah, crazy. I, 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 like, but who said that? Man? Who who said this? Y'all, y'all that, really that guy, don't listen when I'm that talking. Kind of came left that's field wild. a little bit. All right, but when he, little, um, first of all, he threw me off when he said well, he lubricated the hell out of that mother. That was a reach, bro. That was a reach. That was a reach. <laughs> no, no. The reason the reason I played it is because it, it hit exactly what I was talking about the last time we had this discussion. When, you know, it's always if you if you disagree with that, you're a hater or, you know, when I was talking about, well, that might not be something I would do to the extent that you would do. Remember, I said that. OK, and more along the every, conversation you have with Young Disciple, Young Disciple and G. OK, remember when G was talking I'm, about uh, um, what, what kind of father wouldn't do that. Right. And I I got well, I got was, some more putting words in his mouth. But yeah, got, no, no, no. Go back and watch. Yeah, he, don't, you don't put extra words in that man's no, mouth. Bro. Don't do that. It Pause. No, no, G really, said really what kind of, no, day, what kind of father like, wouldn't do that. I'm not a bad father. He he said, he said, what, no, he said, I'm not a bad father. father. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, Bruce. Hey, them sodas got like, he got like this. Bro, yeah. His Wi Fi started going out. He was so pissed off, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let me get back. Let me get back to the business. Let me get go back ahead, Bruce. Go ahead. I just listened to this guy. He said, "Hey, yeah. if you know, if you feel one, you know, it's two sides of each story. You either gonna mm -hmm. agree with it, or you're not gonna agree with what he's doing, right? Mm -hmm. It don't necessarily make you a hater either way, because you, as a as a father, right, and it's something that only fathers can 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 talk about, right? Like you gonna feel one way or another, but you have that the the best influence on what you want for your kid versus the next man, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think him saying that was like, oh yeah, you you're a hater if you don't." agree with me that's not what that's not where i'm at right like i could care less I really like right. we we either share you know we either share the same sentiment when it comes to to bringing our kids it, yeah. you know fatherhood you know we always want the best for our kids and sometimes we might want the best for our kid might be to have them walk through the fire and flame on their own they're gonna get fire and flame regardless whether we help them or not like the wife gonna give them fire and flame right like the kid might give them fire and flame and brimstone so so I think him ushering Bronny, and I'm just echoing what I said before, him ushering Bronny into the NBA and putting him like putting flame to to flame to his ass and pushing him in is like, all right, well, you know, I we come from a certain fraternity now, right? I'm gonna say fraternity when it comes to these players, right? Because he started a fraternity where everybody is cool with each other, nobody's isolating, and so it, does that mean that him and Rich I'm Paul are more control. the reason of that? But go ahead. You think? Well, I mean, right now that's not the case, right? Right now, Le LeBron James is he's he's the guy. He's running the league, right? Yeah. He's pretty much running the league in almost every yeah. aspect. I would say he exacerbated he, um, the hell out of it, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and so you can see him like selling this point. It's almost like he's trying super hard to sell him and his son playing on the same team. Mm -hmm. That's him, and that's, that's also, him, bro. Like that's all I said that too, but okay. Yeah, that's him. I mean, that's him. Uh, you never know. That that's listen. It could be in their contract to do this, man. Like, all I know is, is you still got to suit up. He, he still got to put his tennis shoes on. Okay, he still has to play. You know, what I mean, he's tier one guards. He still got to prove himself. But you know, if, if that's something his father want to do, that's fine with me. I would probably do the same thing for mine. I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie to you. If I had that that level of influence, I would do it. So, um, next thing. You hear you hear this false equivalency talking about, well, we see coaches do it all the time. We see front office people do it all the time. But those guys, let's say you coach, right? We see it in the NFL. NFL is heavy with nepotism, especially among coaches and all that, right? I totally get it. But here's the thing. In the NFL, you see a coach, right? When he puts his son in position, what he will do is put him at the bottom rung. He won't. He won't make him a freaking coordinator off top or pull the strings to get him a head coaching job off top. What does he do? Uh, get him in from the time he's like in high school. Right. And he's like at the bottom rung. Maybe he's doing some uh, 
some video stuff or some super low level scouting or quality control or something like that. Right. And then he goes up through the rungs and maybe he gets some um, assistant position coach and then a position coach. And then he becomes uh, uh, like some assistant coordinator and then a coordinator. Right. Most of these dudes, you see, they had multiple jobs and multiple stops around the league. Right. In doing these smaller and smaller things and working their way up the ladder. Yes, we see that people open the door for their sons and I'm not averse to that. I'm averse to opening the door and putting them in immediately on a level where they don't deserve to be. Now, could Bronny end up being pretty good? Could he end up being good? Absolutely. That's not my argument. My argument has been from the beginning that he didn't deserve this opportunity right now. One. And two, anyone who dissents from that is not a hater. People have a right to see it how they see it. And anyone who dissents from that is not less than as a father, right? So those three things. So those those things are like, really big for me and for Stephen A to come on here and talk as if no one should have a dissenting opinion and if as if they are so wrong for doing so and then to lie to us and tell us well LeBron has earned this and he should be able to do whatever he wants to do because of all he's done for the league yes he's made more money but again he's made a ton of money but part of that is the natural course of inflation but what realistically because maybe Stephen no don't not maybe Stephen A knows things that I don't know but realistically, from our vantage point, I'm not asking you to know whatever Stephen A was saying. I'm asking from our vantage point, which is right here, well outside the league, what do y'all see LeBron as having done for the league that's so incredible? Win. Be we in keep, the conversation of winning. But what, what, what has that done for the league, though? You know what I'm saying? Elijah won. won I mean, he, he doesn't have anything in himself final. that could... He's not a league changing type of player. If you want to talk oh. about league changing, that's like the Steph Curry. Like if you do something yes. new, yes. that's yes. different. Yes. LeBron James just played the game mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. won, right? right? Like you know what I'm saying. But, Plenty of people can quick, do stuff a, for the league. James Harden did something for the league before LeBron what? did. What? What did he, he do for the league? He invented the trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he invented the trouble. No, fair enough, fair four enough. steps. You got to gather right. step. You got to pick up step. You got to come check and bump me step. Then you can take two steps and you can shoot the ball. (laughs) You're right. You're right. James Harden invented that, right? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, so if you're looking at it from a a, that standpoint, I'm just going by what we do. He didn't do anything, but I think what Stephen A was pointing to was like, Mm -hmm. I mean, the man's been at the top of the league, right? Mm-hmm. The the times he's been in the with ten times in the in the NBA finals, like the, mm-hmm. the 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 battles he gave with Steph Curry, the battles he gave with uh the San Antonio Spurs, the the teams that he and helped put together to help sell these tickets to these teams, bring a championship to this team, bring a championship mm-hmm. to that team. I think he's looking at it more in that retrospect, not necessarily he did something that we're forever gonna remember, except for the forty the forty thousand points. But mm-hmm. other than that, like something like big, like Steph Curry, like Steph. Made these start making these dudes shoot from 35 coming out of high school. Mm-hmm. You go to if you y'all go to any of these middle school basketball games, mm-hmm. these little kids don't care, bro. They they jacking no. it up from way beyond yeah. the three point yeah. line. Yeah. Steph did that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He gave yeah, yeah. birth to that, but you know? and that might not even be good for the league. But anyway, that's a whole no, different I think it's topic. horrible for the league, think, <laughs> right? Right? That's why Trey Young's exist. Yeah, yeah, I think, real. um, yeah, go ahead, I think I, I look at I mean, I've been, been thinking about this for a while, and okay, uh, his influence from a GM perspective. Mm-hmm. I think if Mike had that, then he would have definitely had way more rings in Chicago. If he if he didn't have those 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 bumps, because remember Jerry Krause was probably the reason why Mike sat down, right? And so he was. That's just that's 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 the only point that I can think of right now, outside of what y'all already said. Um, but I think if Mike had that influence, it would have been more than six. They would have had more than six. But we would look at it differently, right? Because. When you're when you're that whole GM stuff takes away from competition. But again, that's a whole that's a whole different topic as well. So, again, it gets back to this whole business of um, Tyler. He didn't popularize the point forward because Bird was the first great point forward. Like he was doing but that. It wasn't popular before LeBron. It wasn't popular. It was like when like guys came up behind Bird and started doing the same thing. Jalen Rose did it. He was a point forward. Do we know Jalen Rose at point forward? Do we know Jalen Rose is the yeah. guy that got 81 scored on him? I think that's what he's mainly known for. No, no, no. I don't think he's mainly known for that. I think he is. That's, you, every, that you're, you're you, you type Kobe in Jalen Rose, and I don't I don't mean see 81 get put I don't on mean him. that to be disrespectful, but you're a Laker Kobe guy, so that's the first thing that comes. That's the association you have. You know what I'm saying? But in terms of Jalen Rose as a basketball player, 
definitely a point forward guy. Okay. And then after that, how, like, how, like you tell, you went from Bird to Jalen mm-hmm. Rose. What's the time mm-hmm. gap between those guys? Uh, about five years. Okay. What's Less? the time gap between Jalen Rose? Rose came in the league, 94. Bird okay. retired in 92. So, 92. So, there's yeah. a little bit of a gap. So, all that time, Bird was being a point forward. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Anthony Mason was a point forward. He was, he was a point forward. Anthony Mason. He was diesel as hell. But, but the point I'm trying to make is, like, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, I'm having a real hard time with, and, and this is not about UNG. This is about Stephen A's contention. He did so much for the league. And yes, he made the league a lot of money, but I'm just trying to figure out he did so much for the league. What is that? But then there's, you know, there's nobody around to push back on that statement. You know what I'm saying? And so it just keeps getting back to this. He should be able to do whatever it is that he wants to do. Um, looks like we got a call here, gentlemen. Let's go ahead and Early, take this. Man, we didn't even put the number yeah. in the chat. I know, right? Let's go ahead and take this, man. For my podcast, who's this calling from Michigan? Hey, Jamie man, Rose? I'm just uh, a friend, friend who put me onto your podcast. That's what's up. What's your name, man, so I can lock you in? Dante. Oh, Dante. What's good, man? Okay, okay. I saw you in the chat. Thank you for checking us out. What's good, bro? What you got? I want. I wouldn't say that you're a hater, but you most definitely sound jealous and envious of LeBron. Hold on, let me stop you. Let me stop Uh-oh. you. Let me Here we stop go. You. All right. Uh-oh. I don't getting... real talk. I don't I don't like when people say that. I'm not jealous or envious of LeBron at all. And the reason why, I've never been a millionaire. I've never had that, right? I, so I don't miss it. Secondly, let me say this, and, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart when I say it. I have gotten well past that as a person because I simply believe a loss plan for him was not a loss plan for me. You know what I'm saying? I so what I have is what a law deemed for me to have. And so I'm I'm honestly not jealous or envious of the young man at all. Like what is the, what is the what does the disdain come from? Everybody has flaws and everybody has things that somebody don't like about him. Mm-hmm. It's like you always you'll never talk about the good in LeBron. Mm-hmm. It's always the so you know the shit that you don't like. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't like nothing about LeBron. Like, and you're a fanboy if you say the good, but go ahead, brother. No, 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 no. I think you're a fanboy if you can't see both sides. And I'm not. I'm not saying you, Dante, on Dante. Am I saying that right, Deontay Dante. or Dante? Yeah, Dante. Dante. Like thank Dante's you, Inferno. Got it. Okay, got it, got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no, it's not. Uh, it's not disdain. It's that what happens is this: you're so used to and so conditioned from hearing most of the sports media. Talk about LeBron as if he walks on water, heals the sick, and raises the dead. That when you hear someone who gives the opposite side and points out that he doesn't do these things and gives you the other side of the coin, it's like, whoa, this dude must really dislike LeBron. No, it's just you're not used to hearing the other side of the argument, right? And so I'm that guy. I'm going to give you the other side. Does that mean LeBron James has not had an all-time great career? Yes, he has, right? But let's look at this. We heard Stephen A. talk about the winning, right? We heard Transformer talk about he wins. Okay, cool. He wins, but he is the only player in NBA. Matter of fact, let me back this up. He has more finals losses than any other former league MVP ever. But when we talk about he wins, nobody talks about that. But why about why nobody never talk about the early all the early exits? Elijah won here. All the early exits. Jordan, I got you. I got you. Cool, cool, cool. I got you, and I appreciate you bringing that up because Jordan that means it. Jordan that means make the finals in 1992. I got you. Jordan 91. Eight years to get you the 91. But but that's cool. That's cool. I got you. So let me let me respond to it this way. First, we're gonna, talk, about, we're gonna talk about Elijah Wong because that's my guy. That's my favorite player of all time. So I appreciate you mentioning Dream. Right? People don't bring that up. Number one, Elijah Wong's been to the finals three times. He won twice. So he's got a 66% win percentage on the biggest stage. LeBron's win percentage on the biggest stage is 40 times. How many times? Well, how many times did he lose in the earlier rounds? I'm I'm about to get to you. He's he's lost a ton in the early rounds. That said, when people bring that up, has anyone gone back and looked at those rosters Hakeem Olajuwon played with? Because in his second year in the league, hold on, hold on. We we don't get that excuse to LeBron. Stop, stop, hold on. No, first of all, first of all, first of all, Transformer, we don't give that excuse to LeBron because nobody calls Dream the GOAT, whether it's true or not. Oh, no, it's because words. Goat. Okay, got it. No, right. no. When you call somebody the GOAT, right, your excuses dwindle. Like I told G when it comes to um Lamar Jackson, and we'll get to that next. Like I told G, when you're a certain level of great, what you need is supposed to decrease, right? If if I'm if I'm, if this is Bruce Hope hooping, I need a whole lot more 
than G needs, right? Because I'm not as good as him. If this is Bruce Holtz hooping, hope, hooping, I need a whole lot more than LeBron needs because I'm nowhere near him. LeBron is in another galaxy, and I'm still on the ground right here. No question, right? Who so, called, Who said Who said go first, the media or LeBron? Hold on. Hold on. I believe it was the media, but go hold ahead. Hold on, Mr. Mr. Chosen One and all that. First of all, I'm answering Dante, so you, you okay. just hold on. I get back to you. But but no, in all seriousness, no. so with Dream, right, if you notice when Dream had some help, when he had Ralph Sampson with him, Twin Towers, in 1986, his second year in the league, he went to the NBA Finals. They swept Kareem and Magic out of the playoffs, and he only had one other all-star player with him, right? He didn't have a loaded-up super team. Now, when Ralph Sampson uh, blew his knee out and then uh, subsequently got traded away from the team, go look at those rosters. Those rosters were the worst, okay? So now you're in the West with a loaded Portland squad. You're in the West with a Utah Jazz squad. You're in the West with a loaded Showtime Lakers squad, which we can agree in any given year between 1979 and 1988 was one of the top six teams of all time in NBA history. Am I right, Transformer, about those Showtime Lakers? Oh, no. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Showtime. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay. I, hate to, I hate to admit it, but it's true, right? And so the Switch argument now ass. becomes when you bring up Elijah on, how was he supposed to get out of the conference when that's what he was going against without any type of help from his teammates? That that's so that's the Elijah one thing. Michael Jordan, right? And I actually did a few shows on this, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Michael Jordan comes into the league. His rosters were terrible as well, and he comes in the league in '84. He runs right into smack in the middle of Larry Bird's prime, three straight MVP awards, best player in basketball, uh, right? And and there were five Hall of Famers on that Celtics team, right? So that uh, that team between '82 and '87. Three Hall of Famers, too. Five, Andre, Andre Iguodala. Mm -hmm. Understand what I'm saying? Seth Curry. Iguodala is not Hall of Famer, but go ahead. Well, he might end up being one, but go Kevin ahead. Durant. Kevin Durant. Kevin mm -hmm. Durant. Draymond Green. So what's the excuse there? Okay, so what happens here with is a hurt this. Kyrie, with a hurt Kyrie. And no a hurt Kyrie. Kyrie. No Kyrie. So would it hurt Kyrie and a hurt Kevin Love, or however you want to describe it, Kyrie no, and Kevin no Love? No Kyrie and Kevin Love. No Kyrie. Kevin you know what? Love. Go ahead. Thank you, Transformer. With, with Kyrie and Kevin Love, right? They end up winning in 2016, but that was a different thing. But cool. They end up winning the so-called greatest comeback, one to three, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So cool. So they win that. So you got that. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. You asked me why Jordan wasn't winning earlier, why Dream wasn't winning earlier. I explained to you why Dream wasn't winning earlier. Jordan faced similar circumstances. When he comes into the league, the Celtics are right there with the Lakers, two best teams in basketball. He has to figure out how to deal with them. Right. But he never got to because the Pistons knocked them off first. And those Pistons went back to back champions and went to the finals three straight times and arguably are one of the top 10 greatest championship teams ever. Right. So he has to figure out how he's going to get through that. Now, once Michael Jordan actually scaled the mountain, nobody. Knocked Four him. players got old. But go ahead. No, that's a lie. That's it. See, see, I don't let me let me chill. Let me chill. You, you. All right. So it's a lie when you say players got old. Because do your research, the average age of the Pistons when Michael Jordan knocked them off in the 1990-91 season was 29 years old. Which, if you look it up, Let's talk is, about the stars. Right, the is stars. right in the middle of the prime of a basketball player's career. And that is a fact. Yes. The stars. I'm not talking did, about the average of a Isaiah, team. Isaiah the Thomas stars. came into the NBA in 1981 at the age of 20, right? So that means that means nine years later, he was 29, like I just said. Dumars was younger than him. So let's stop the false narratives. I know you want to do it so bad because you got to tell them in there. But you're wrong. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. Lambeer was younger than Zeke, too. You're wrong, bro. Just do just do the knowledge. Do the not. You're not going to win this one with me because I do all the research because I'm ready for y'all. Sure, you're not going to win what this. What about Boston? Let's talk about Boston. Dante, was Boston, well, Boston was already out of the picture because they had gotten supplanted by the Pistons. Right. So another another thing out the way. Got it. Back then there was an order, a pecking order, and you had to you had to fight your way through that. There was an order. Man, go through your homework, young fella, Dante. But that that's my response to um why Dream and why Jordan didn't win sooner. But once uh when Dream finally won, he was the guy for the next two years. And when Jordan won, obviously he was the guy for a long time until he stepped away. Then he came back and he was the guy again. And quick note, I'm sure you've heard this stat, Michael Jordan. And the Chicago Bulls between 1991 and 1998 
that whole stretch never lost more than two games in a row. That that's that's insane. But um, listen, I, I appreciate you calling, man. No, Thank no, you so no. Much. You're not gonna let my boy Dante let no, 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 what? no, no, what? no, no. What, what you got, transform? What? Because what? that man had an objective right. opinion about what he thought about yeah, Michael. And I Jeffrey dismantled Jordan. that. And you gave every freaking excuse in the freaking excuse. book. Reason. Excuse, not excuses. Reasons, reason. excuses, no, everything for, that, for, for the reasons why. Oh, he had to play against this team. He had to play against that team. He had, this team was talking about. This team had four superstars. This team had four Hall of Famers. What was he supposed to do when he had no backup? Look at the teams he was facing. Oh, blah, 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 blah. When we say that about LeBron James, oh, you're the GOAT. No, th that's it. You're the that's GOAT. It. That's it. He's supposed to be the but GOAT. Who, he's yeah. not saying he's yeah. the GOAT. He says I'm the best player in the league. He's not saying I'm a GOAT. He's not walking hey, around. I'm go, go, go. Now go, go, go. he is. Okay. Okay. Back then he wasn't. Okay. Let me let me help you out here, transforming with your Lakers hat. Let me help you. Let me help you because I got you on this. When Kobe you got was me. In, when you got Kobe Jesus. was in that situation, what did he do? Got in the lab, got better, got a little help, and won some more. He didn't ask for a trade. He, didn't make he a asked for a trade. Game. He okay. asked for a trade. He what manipulated the front office to go get Paul Gasol. Yes, he did. But 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 did he try to form? He didn't. He didn't form any super team. He didn't do that like like LeBron did. So let's not do that. He got better, and you know it, and I know it. He went back in the lab, got better, got stronger physically and mentally, and yep. he went back three more times to the finals and got two more chips out of it. We can't say that about a and certain And was literally about to go get Dwight Howard in his prime and, and Chris Paul in his prime. So let's go ahead. Hey. Yeah, but my, my bad, Dante. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. Whatever it is you got, I mean, I know all the things. I've, I've seen a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. Appreciate and, that. And listen. Yeah, we definitely appreciate that, brother. Listen, man, listen. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, man, a broad got under you just under your skin, man. I mean, I don't know. What I mean, I don't get it. Something deep rooted within yourself. It's not. It's some ugly stuff within yourself <laughs> that you don't like, with though you hate the broad so much. I I just finished. Okay, man. All right, you got it, brother. You got I it. Got her. We're gonna say dislike. I'm let you go. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> Like, God damn, bro. But I got you, man. Have a yeah. good night, bro. Hey, but thank you for real. Thank you for calling. I really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into the show, man. All right. And uh, yeah, you have a great night, man. Thanks so much. All right, brother. Appreciate you, Dante. See, that boy got that boy. That boy got really talking about. Hey, as soon as he said the way he walked into that conversation with Dante got on the phone, <laughs> Nino immediately. <laughs> said, Here we go. I, I missed it. What happened with Nino? Oh, no, will you scroll up? Let me scroll up. Uh, Dino Go said uh, he, he put the laughing emoji with the hand in front of his face. Uh -huh. I was like, Here we go. Oh man, <laughs> Nino was like, It's on. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. Y'all crazy. Oh man, I love it when somebody calls in with that energy, man. Dante, bro, sh big shout out to Dante, man. One, he did, he watched a couple of videos, so he know that right. it's a little. It's a little something off when it comes to Bruce and LeBron conversations. Nah, man. But that, I don't, you know, I don't know that dude. I don't know that dude. <laughs> but um, <laughs> hey Brandon, absolutely, man. You're 100 percent right, brother. That's a fact. Never did. The answer is never. But anyway. Yeah, it's a new <laughs> excuse now. It's a new excuse every day. So go ahead. Um, but yeah, uh <laughs> it really is, bro. It really is. I can't. It's anyway. Um yeah, so I know a uh, better question. When has he played against anybody without two top? Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, anybody else want to go ahead and call in before we move to the last topic? Um, you know the number 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. Hey yo, transforming man. Let's see up, what you try to do there, man. What did you, what'd I do? Get me distracted, distract my focus and Make me split my shields when I had your man Dante on the phone. I see what you were doing though. No, nah, because you you were like so so Dante gave a statement, mm -hmm. and you just without even giving him options to have a rebuttal, you just kept punching the man in the face. It was like I'm not gonna just sit here and let you just punch this man. Bruce, back up, man. Let his hands are tied. Let his hands let him, let, him, let, him, let, him, let, him, let his hands go. He asked me these questions, so I wanted to make sure that I responded to what he asked me. That's what that was. You know, he asked me about, and it's you know, oh, as soon as he said pop. it, I was like, I knew, bro. I wish I had my popcorn. <laughs> you already you already know Dream is my guy. That's my yeah. favorite player yeah. of all time. So anybody asked me about Dream, okay, let's get it. I'm ready for that. 
Let's get it, you know? And then Mike, the mic discussion is too easy. I actually did a show a while back um, talking about how uh, how it works in terms of um, how it worked back then about the pecking order in the East and all that. Um, let, Nino's calling. Let's get this, and then we'll, uh, we'll get back. Here we go. Nino, what's good, my brother? How you doing, hey. man? We get, we get, we getting right now. We getting even, bro. Hey, we getting <laughs> even in here. <laughs> no doubt. We getting man. even in here. <laughs> no doubt, Nino. What's good, man? What's good? I mean, I'm just saying. I, as soon as he said, "Hey," I knew you was gonna go crazy. <laughs> oh, bro, <laughs> go crazy, man? Did I go crazy? <laughs> <laughs> we seen steam coming from your head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's just crazy, man. How you know, I, and that's why I said like my response is always the same in terms of um, you know, the mainstream sports media. We hear so much, you know, LeBron is just everything, and so when you present the opposite side of it, factually, not opinion, but factually. People are like, oh, you hate LeBron. I'm like, well, I, I don't hate him. I'm just presenting you the side that you're not used to hearing. And so it sounds as if I hate the dude. And so that that's the difference, man. You know, you've been around long enough. <laughs> I'm with uh, what part are we talking about? We talking about the Bron part or the Bronny part? On the Bronny part. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be about Bronny, but go ahead. <laughs> On the Bronny part, I mm-hmm. say so whatever you like because I understand what you said about the about the uh he had the heart surgery mm-hmm. and I know how much I used to love basketball mm-hmm. I probably could see me like man look man, I'm gonna die like this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on the flip side I understand cause, but I just got a little a little baby now okay congrats you man saying, I appreciate it but I understand you saying like I probably been like hey we got the money yeah, don't I don't. I don't need to push you out there. You don't have to do this like I had to do this. Exactly. But I can't say he pushed him out there. But if mm-hmm. he did, that's crazy. That's crazy. But so it's, we don't know. But it's two good points. Dude. Right, right, right. No doubt, no doubt. Now on the bronze suit, yes. can we please stop breaking up rings for measurement of the great player? I mean, it should, so, it should be all the way out. So let me say this, Nino. Um, normally I don't, if you notice, right? Um, yeah, I, I know you. Right, right, right. I normally don't. So the the only thing, the only time I ever bring that up is when people talk about LeBron as a winner, and I'm like, yes, he won four championships, but how do we just gloss over how much he lost? That's the part that's amazing to me. Like, we have the nerve, as Stephen A. says, the nerve, the temerity, the unmitigated gall to sit back and 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 tout LeBron as this incredible winner when he lost 60% of the times he was on the biggest stage like I don't know how that works but you see how, you see work? how you said you see how you said that there right you see how you said that there did I, how did he I lost like- right but when Dante asked you about prior to winning you gave mm-hmm. all these reasons why if you mm-hmm. applied the same reasons to LeBron in those finals appearances Mm-hmm. The tune is different because his first champ, his first ride against uh the San Antonio Spurs he was like, oh yeah. man, he's too young. Okay, so okay. now he's four and five, right? But if he if he had won, nobody would have been saying, Oh, he's too young. They'd have been, oh my gosh, the greatest but, thing. But we, it, but we say it, but we say it. I mean, it lost. was literally it was literally three on one. The man, it wasn't nobody you couldn't name a person on that Cleveland Cavali- Cavaliers team against a dynasty in the, the San Antonio. Wasn't Anton Spurs. Jameson on that team? And Booby Gibson Trash. was on that team. Trash. Wait, wait, Anton James. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. With At that time, yeah, in Cleveland, trash. Jersey, trash. Yeah, but, Cleveland, Jersey. We're not talking about Washington Wizards or nothing like that. We're talking about mm-hmm. the Cavaliers, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. amazing can, how that works. We say that about that. All right, he goes to Miami. Them four titles, them four title appearances. We can mm-hmm. criticize those to the full extent. I'm not going to say nothing about those. All right. Then he goes okay. and get, uh, again with uh, uh against the uh, Golden State Warriors. He's mm-hmm. without Kyrie Irving and he's without uh, Kevin Love. Mm-hmm. But we don't give him a pass on that, so it's like okay, now it's it's one on it's one on three right now. Okay, cool. He wins the next year. Oh man, but if it wasn't for Draymond Green and that suspension, we we throw a wrench in it. Like why are we throwing a wrench in it now when y'all didn't context throw a wrench matters. in the reason why he lost? Because context matters. 
but but you didn't throw that same wrench in why he lost the previous year. Where was that same wrench? He lost Kyrie, which is a starting point guard. He loses Kevin Love, which is a starting four. But we don't throw that same wrench because Draymond lost was missing one game. LeBron was out his two best players for five. Was it five and six? Because Kyrie played game one and he was out for the rest of the series. Kevin Love didn't play at all. So, so we don't we don't throw the same wrench, bro. So again, and and this like is about it. the biggest the biggest point, and I understand what you're saying, but my biggest point on that is this whole he's the goat thing, right? And people were saying that, that was even before, before that conversation, one, that even before the one three. The right? people, before what does that have to do with him? What I'm saying is. You don't get to, I'm the greatest, this, that, and the third, but then it's still always you need an excuse when it doesn't happen for you, right? That's that's my thing. But then we we bash him when he wins, bro. I, I don't get it, bro. What, what, what? I, I don't get it. I, I, Look, I man, you're not, it, you're not going to get it. You're a LeBron fan. You're not going to get it. And no, that's cool. no, I'm, I'm, an obje- I'm, a, I'm objective because I give you the four. <laughs> Like what I'm saying, like you gave all like I'm you went into detailed reason uh-huh. on Don to Dante on why or oh, because this happened, and mm-hmm. you gotta think that the Boston Celtics were this. Oh, but then he mm-hmm. went to Detroit and they were that. That mm-hmm. same energy don't apply with LeBron. Why he was called Jesus before he even made uh, one of NBA finals. Jordan was he was called I Jesus. Was, I don't think it was that early. Hey, real quick, hold on. Your favorite hater, man. I've never seen you before, bro. Um, thank you for checking in the checking in the uh the show. Was trash. Appreciate it's you. Effective. Um, make sure you hit that, <laughs> make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, man. I appreciate seeing you in here and hit the share button, man. Share is powerful. Appreciate you. All right, Absolutely. but yeah, we do uh, my bad. But hold on, let's um, Nino, man, you still there? You still with me? Oh Trans- my bad. Transformer cooking, man. Transformer cooking. Transformer got the pot going on. You know. That's what we do here, bro. This what we do because this. Is what y'all doing? Uh, accusing the young, the youngsters of coming up. Mm-hmm. Y'all basically saying y'all is responsible. We think we all, because we don't fit into it, is responsible for the lack of appreciation of a king mm-hmm. and players like that. Because mm-hmm. they're gonna be like, hold on, Jordan did all the winning, and he did it by himself. That's what doesn't happen. And now, even with LeBron, if you're a LeBron fan, mm-hmm. and they go to my bro, well, he didn't have no help, and now I'm like, what? What happened to the game? I don't like that. I feel you. Had help every time he won. He had help. MJ had help. And yeah. there was great players that didn't win. That they, That's true, too. You need a team. It's a lot of stuff got to happen for you to win a championship. That's now, a fact. You That's a fact. The skills. I can critique Brian's skills when y'all think he can't shoot free throws. Mm-hmm. Y'all think he can't shoot free throws. I don't say, man, Brian's a great player. His hands are <laughs> still big. Yeah. That boy is horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. 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 Horrible. Yeah. 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 Horrible. Yeah. 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 Not nah, Nino. Yeah, listen, I Nino. I always give you love, man, because you're objective, man. We don't always agree, but you know, you're objective. You know the game. You do your homework, and that's cool. So I always give you love. So I don't, I don't mind that you're a LeBron fan because your brain still works. But unfortunately, many of them, that's not the case. <laughs> you know that. Nah, it's it. a lot of them. I agree. It's a yeah. lot of them. It's sad. It's a lot of MJ fans that brain don't work either. Because I know you. See, you barely even bring up. Uh, the final record until you see they call you a hater. You go, you know, they make you go in the hate mode. <laughs> but it's a lot of, I don't, it's a lot of people. I don't think really just watch a lot of basketball. They that's right. all they want to talk about. Why well, come Brun lost in the playoffs? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, come on, come on, man, we gotta stop. Nah, that's fair enough. If that's it, fair by, enough. But by that, by that metric, Charles Buckley, so he the worst player. We not he even. Yeah, yeah, they dumb. Anybody's, yeah, I feel you. But Nino, you know, let me let you go, man. I think um Sid Bubba was trying to get through, oh, yeah, so I'll make sure I give him an opportunity okay. to call in. But man, thank you as uh, always. Always appreciate your support, man. We got one more topic after this day. Always love Nino. That one might go off the rails too, well, but we'll see. Keep cooking, Trans. Keep cooking it up. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, All right, let me go ahead and take this, Nino. Take it easy, brother. Bruce, what's good, man? What's going on with you, soldier? Chilling, chilling. What's good, Mr. B. Moore? I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep yes, it sir. short. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me go keep a hood right here. Do that. Man, what you want? You, what you want to square it with LeBron? Yo? That's all. This is the sound like. You know, going to pop him one good time. Yo. Nah, man. That dude is like 6'9", 280, man. I'm good. Who's going to get cut? I'm a, I'm a martial artist, but I don't think I want those problems. Hey, man, you can't miss it. Yes, you put to be an army man, man. You the army, y'all got the heart of a lion, man. I on, did it. Hey, man. Man. hey, but listen, but but we're we're also not dumb and don't walk into ambush. I was just about <laughs> to say they ain't stupid. 
<laughs> right. Yeah, if, if, I'm, if I'm going for that fight, I'm going to take a squad with me. But anyway, go ahead, brother. <laughs> you, you had a chance to square it with LeBron uh -huh. right now because of how you feel about him. Because I'm not saying that you're hating on him. Mm -hmm. I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't even going to say that it's jealousy. Mm -hmm. I understand, I understand how, where you're coming from, though. LeBron, can, he is a, a, a quote-unquote, he's, he's like he's he a demon. He yes. got the, the American dream life, the beautiful wife, the beautiful kids. Facts. He got the privilege. And I'm not jealous of any of that. I'm happy he was able to get those I things. am. I'm he, jealous. He, he, he paid $2 million a year on his body. He mm -hmm, stayed mm -hmm. fit. I understand that, man. I understand because he could be a little deverish. Mm -hmm. He could be very arrogant. Mm -hmm. His IQ is so high, just like man, uh, you want to square with that man one time, man. That's all, I, you know. Go ahead, Bruce. Go ahead, take your chance, bro. <laughs> nah, man, it's not. Believe me, I swear, it's not even like that, Bruce. <laughs> I'm gonna say this one thing, though. Yes, sir. I'm say this one thing. Yeah. I, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Jordan lost in the playoffs, but six years in a row before he won one hundred ring. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. But how can you? Okay. Okay, he ain't even make the final six mm -hmm. years in the, seven years in a row. Facts. Okay, LeBron went to ten in a row. No, he ten. went. To, he went to eight he in a row. He went listen. to ten total, eight in a row. But go ahead. Eight in a row. Yes. Yeah. Listen, listen. Four, he four and six in the finals. He played probably the greatest lineup ever twice. He played one of the finals with Kyrie and Love out. He played one of the finals with Sasha. Pav, uh, uh, Ilgaskis, who was on that team? Uh, 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 it's a bunch of trash. When they played the Almighty Spurs with the Spurs. Agalskis. Agalskis was his name. Yeah. Daniel Booby Gibson. And one of the finals, no Kevin Love, no Kyrie. One, and, and two of the finals, come on, bro. No, come Nobody on. was going to win that championship but them. Got four Hall of Famers. You panic against four Hall of, Hall of Famers. Kevin Durant and Stephen Curry on the same team with Clay Thomas, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala. That's cheating. Whoa, 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 with what LeBron did. And and I, I say this for a reason. Do you truly believe that Kevin Durant does that if LeBron never went to Miami and made that super oh, team? Oh, LeBron man. made that acceptable. So KD said, okay, I got you. Boom. Hold my beer. That's what KD said. Okay. So, 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 so what did KG and Ray Allen do when they went to Boston? Ah, right. here we go. I got you. Okay, cool. He, he likes cool. that one, Bruce. Here we Bruce. go. Oh, oh, hope y'all are Bruce. It's kind of hard, man. Pause. It's kind of tough. Hey, Bruce, you ready for this? You ready for this? Yeah. All right, cool. Great question. I get that question all the time. So let me help you out as a Celtics fan, okay? Oh, Paul, Pe man. Oh, good, man. Paul Pierce was there, right? Ray Allen was traded to the Celtics. The front office made that happen. And Kevin Garnett was <gasps> traded to the Celtics. So that wasn't some... Hey, look, hey, come over here. Let me holler at y'all. Look, I, I, I can't win. So let's let's go ahead and let's get together and make a super team. And you know what's the crazy part? Everybody makes it look like, um, you know, LeBron did everything he could, couldn't get over the top, so he made a super team. I don't know how long you've been watching the show, but I did an episode where I, I actually played a clip from Melo. LeBron was trying to start that super team up from the very beginning, from the very beginning of his time in the league. He was trying to do that, and Melo puts that on Front Street on his podcast. I know you'll be more guy, so I brought up Melo. But the point is, LeBron been at that. He was trying to start a super team from as early as possible. Okay, so, so what's wrong with that? When what an organization, it? because it means you're, it means you're ducking comp, it means you're ducking competition. I was, I was about to say something, but I'm not going to say that. Better. Competition is much better than the '80s and '90s. It's called evolution. Okay, cool. You what's got wrong it. Wrong with teaming up? Yeah, you got it. Okay. What's wrong with teaming up? Nothing. Okay. Boston made it okay. I guess so, right? I'm gonna let you, you live, they Transformer. No <laughs> you think they ain't had no conversation? I'm gonna let you live, Transformer. You think Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett they had no conversation. Oh, they did. They, of they for sure did. Yeah, but what I'm they saying could, they could have vetoed that trip, like, bro, nah, let's not do that. 
I want to be competitive. I want to play against them. They could really? say that. Really? Yeah. And so and so here's the other thing we forget. I, I We got to do this all the time. Paul Pierce, 10 years in the league. Kevin Garnett, 13 years in the league. Still Ray Allen, 12 years in the league. Still dropping so now, 25. So now when, now, when you say that, it becomes a little different when guys have been in the league for an entire career already, putting work in and saying, damn, I can't make it happen. And even still, once more, this wasn't these dudes whispering in the corner and then holding a franchise hostage or or walking out and forming up a super team. I can't even say hold a franchise hostage because wow, respect man. due to LeBron, LeBron has never done that. He has finished hey, hey, every brother, contract LeBron, he has been on, and I have a lot of respect for that, believe it or not. He's never yeah, walked out on a contract. He's never forced to trade. So respect, dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm nah. you far, though. I ain't going to hold you up, brother. All right, brother. What, is, what was the first instant that make your heart and your feelings towards the one LeBron feel the way you feel? What was the first time you're like, I don't like this motherfucker? No, not that I don't like don't him. Like I don't like the stuff that <laughs> happens to him. But, but if, if that's the case, no, 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 no. That's not the that's like, not the same I don't thing. like this motherfucker. No, no, no. That's not the same thing. But realistically, Bruce, um, real talk, the decision really disappointed me. Because I'm like, look at this. This is the most... I didn't like that move. Again, I felt like listen, ducking competition no, that I don't respect that. Bro. NBA is an entertainment company. That's what it's about. Okay, LeBron okay. So that's cool. Entertainment company. So let me let me just tell you this real quick before you go. And I, I bring this up all the time. I'm, you may have heard me say it on the show. 1988, Dominique Wilkins had the opportunity to be a free agent. And he could have gone to New York and played with Patrick Ewing. Now imagine Dominique Wilkins and Patrick Ewing on those Knicks teams. Now... They got a legit, an even more legit chance when they bump up against the freaking the Bulls or whoever else in the playoffs, right? Dominique said, no, that's Pat's team. I don't want to join up with him. I want to beat him, right? Dominique said that. Isaiah Thomas, when he was a free agent, he could have gone to New York and played with the Knicks. But go look it up. He said, that's Patrick Ewing's team. The point I'm trying to make is dudes wanted to compete. They weren't trying hey, to Bruce, team up. Like they was name. trying to beat each other. Hey, hey, Pause. Bruce. Hey, Bruce, how old is you, bro? About 44, 45. I'm 46. I'm 46. I just turned 46 like two weeks ago. Still stuck in the past, brother. It, listen, still stuck in the past, you, can, you can say that all you want, but the fact is this. The fact is this. Sports at their purest, at their lowest level, are about competition. Lining up me against you, can I beat you? If it's a race, I'm lining up to see if I'm faster than you. If it's freaking triple jump, long jump, can I jump further than you? If it's wrestling, can I slam you? Can I pin you? Competition. So Porzingis and Jay Drew Holiday joining the Boston Celtics this year. That didn't make them a super team. They didn't link. No, no, because those guys, no, those guys aren't superstars. Those guys are really valuable, high-level role players. Drew Holiday not a superstar? Absolutely not. not I wouldn't say superstar. All star. Absolutely not. But listen, Bruce. Listen, I gotta um, I gotta let you go, man. As always, right, I man. really appreciate you calling. Thank you so much. And I'm not just saying that. I do, man. Thank you for being in the chat. Right, and thank you for calling, brother. You have a good night. All right, All right, right fam. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sid Bubba, I missed you again, man. I, I really want to get your call in. Call back right now before we move on to the next topic. Call back right man, now. Big shout out, Bruce, man. Hey, man, you going to go scrub with LeBron or not? No, <laughs> if the Browns if the Brown was walking this door right now, you gonna square up with Bron or no? You know what? Real, real talk. That's the funny thing. Are you gonna, oh man, let me get the autograph. LeBron, bro. I don't nah, uh, uh, you, you know. You don't what? want the man autograph. I'll, I'll, I'll do it because it's gonna be worth money. Uh, I'll do see? it. See, <laughs> nah, nah. You gotta steal yeah, off on him real quick, man. Why do y'all? Who's at the Diddy party? So. Y'all, why do y'all believe like I got some personal problem with this dude? That's the wild part, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, bro, because you don't wild. you don't see from the outside looking in, bro. <laughs> like you have to see how detailed you get when it's mm -hmm. about love, bro. You get well, like very detailed. I, I, like, watch I this next to, segment that we're please, on. It might last to, twenty minutes. You're not gonna <laughs> no, go no, as detailed. No. No, but somebody I, say something about Michael Jordan. You're like, oh no, look, look at this up. I got, oh, I'm glad you had that conversation. I'm well, no, glad because, you said that because listen here, you ready? Let me cook. All right. It's because I'm, like, I'm so I'm so used to the, the the stuff that people come at you with. Not you guys, but LeBron fans. Yeah, I'm so used to it that I'm prepared for everything that they can bring. And see, they they don't come prepared for for what I'm going to give them with the facts, right? So I have to be prepared for every eventuality, and I am. You know what I'm saying? They don't come for that. Yeah. But exactly. It's not deep. It's just context. Exactly. So yeah, so that's that's why it's like that with, with me, right? Like yeah. like I said, like 
um old boy Dante, he brought up Dream. I'm like, great, let's do it. I'm prepared. You know hey, what I'm saying? Hey, Dante, he had notes ready for that conversation. Always ready, man. Always he ready. Got notes ready. Always like, ready. I'm like, there's no way he remember all these numbers off the top of his I'm head. I'm trying That's to tell like, you. I can't even do that. I know we ball, but that don't mean we got a great memory. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Um, Steve, what's good, man? Where's Sid, bro? Well, we missing Sid. <laughs> what's good, Steve? Good to, good to hear from you, man. What you got, bro? You too, man. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. I know this was supposed to be about, like, Stephen A and Braun and all that. <laughs> right. Oh, it changed real quick. He kind, of, kind of merged into the LeBron thing. So yeah. I, I just drop a couple things and some of the yes, some sir. of the other callers and stuff, and we're going to talk about you know LeBron. And, and here's the first thing: it's not that you're a hater, because I'm in the same camp. I don't hate LeBron. I, I respect. He's, he's one of the greatest players we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. That's under it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. But when everybody like transform or nothing but love, bro. But when we have these conversations, it's not hate; it's just context. Like when Bruce goes down into these things, like he brings context to like Jordan's era, uh, Hakeem's era, the, you know, the '80s era. And when we talk about LeBron, it's like when you bring up this context where it's like it's not it's not this it's not this jock riding. The cult of LeBron just can't they can't have that objective lens for instance like one of the earlier callers was talking about um you know how many finals has lebron been to and it's like okay he's been to 10 finals he's lost six he's won four but it's like the context if we're going to talk about just going to the finals being an achievement and him going to so many like eight straight bro the east was horrible when lebron was in miami in his second tenure in Cleveland. There's an there's an excuse and there's a reason. Finals. Okay. What's that? No, I'm saying, but we, we provide an excuse and a reason for why it's a like why it's not good. That's what I that's what I don't agree with, right? We say all of these things in reference of like Jordan couldn't get there, he was too young, the Bulls wouldn't develop, all uh Detroit was a dynasty, Celtics was a dynasty, Braun gets the eight finals, man. The East was weak. Uh, come, come on, under, like, can we can we well, not on, do bro. the same thing on both sides, bro? But, no, I, I agree with you, but I do think that that that's detailed context, and it's it's true though, is it not true that in the '80s when Jordan came into the league, there were established teams like you had you had Philly during the '80s, you had LA and Boston, obviously, and you had Detroit. You had some established veterans all-star led teams that Jordan had to compete with and once he got over the hump he had that in the 90s but we don't talk about those teams in the 90s like the Knicks the Pacers the Jazz a lot of Barkley teams like because Jordan kept them from winning rings the only team you can talk about in the Knicks, other than the Bulls are the Rockets not hard not hard amazing you know what, Steve? Yes, I appreciate you, man, because you made that all so simple, and you didn't have to go down the rabbit hole like I did. <laughs> appreciate well, you. Well, I, it's not, well, I appreciate you guys. I do. I, I enjoy your guys' <laughs> dreams. I really do. And but real quick, my last thought. Yes. Um, as far as like, I, I I will appreciate the fact that LeBron's gone to ten finals. I'll appreciate that that he went to eight straight. But then it comes down to yes, like. I do think there's truth to the to Jordan's career. Yeah, he had to battle through, and the context was he didn't go join other teams. LeBron did have to manipulate rosters and franchises to develop his tenures and his success, unlike Jordan. And I just think that's a fair truth. It's not that you're hating. And I get it. It's a different era. It's a different mindset with these younger guys. But it's just the truth. And, like, I, like the East was substantially weak. You have to really think about this. While while he was in Miami, I mean, what was the what was the toughest team in the East at that time? It would what Lance Stevenson Boston. or Paul George in the Pacers. I mean, Boston, yeah. and then when you think about that for an entire era, and then when he left, when things were not looking good in Miami, because he was two and two in those finals, lost to an aging Dallas team that. Let frankly, that's that's a big blemish on the on LeBron's career at that Dallas Finals performance. But then once he left there, he shipped the young Andrew Wiggins, who never played a minute, 
out to go bring in a perennial all-star in Kevin Love. So it's like, and then he did the same thing when he went to L.A. He had the entire youth movement shipped out and had Rich Paul, had Anthony Davis sit out a season or most of the season in New Orleans to bring him on to L.A. the next season. So it's like, there's, I understand it sounds like we're hating, but I think it's fair when you do look at this objective, what it is, it's just objective, it's not hate, that these things are a factor with LeBron's legacy versus somebody like Jordan when you have that GOAT conversation. And I have to agree with Bruce, where it's like, we're talking GOAT. Now you're in a different caliber. You're talking on a different level. Mm -hmm. These things things need to be dissected if we're going to have the talk of the best of the best. Exactly. That's how I look at it. So, and I, I mean, I respect everybody's insight on pro LeBron, like the people who are going to advocate for LeBron. They're, they're right. Like he is a great player. He's, he's talented. The numbers prove it. But the context of when now we're talking the goat, the best of all time, that's when I think the devil's in the details here. There it is, man. I appreciate you, Steve. Thanks so much for, uh, breaking that down <laughs> clearly you're doing a, a better job than i was able to man thank you so much for the call wasn't good but it, right, broke man, it i appreciate around. you guys transformer g Bruce, i appreciate you guys no doubt man. Absolutely, Steve. all right man god bless all right you too man take it easy see it for the 18th time we're gonna get you in here all bro. right all right listen up y'all all right, no more calls except <laughs> sid bubba sid bubba call back right now nobody else call nobody we're gonna see this call then we're gonna get to the last topic no other calls except Sid Bubba. Sid, call back right now. 904 219 8264. 904 219 8264. Only thank you, thank you. for Sid Bubba. Only for Sid Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I, wanted, I wanted to say something back to Steve so bad, but I'm like, because I heard that boop, boop. I'm like, damn, oh, you that's heard it. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, that's Sid. I'm like, yeah, let me, that let me Sid. not, let me not go back and forth with Steve, man. Yeah, yeah, he called like four times in a row. I'm like, ah. So I had to Dang. text him and tell him, okay, when I say call back, call right back. He's not calling right back. Sid, call me back, bro. Waiting on you. And then we move on to the next topic. Damn, how long this one lasts? We're going to let Sid cook because we've been on this topic for almost two yeah, hours. Yeah, got to let Sid cook. Let Sid uh, cook, bro. <laughs> you, call, you called it, G. <laughs> he sure did. He sure did. Hey, I but hey, I tell G, G know how we felt Monday night when we <laughs> we was on one topic. He let that thing cook for an hour. <laughs> yeah, G, man, we was supposed to be on here for like an hour, man. <laughs> G like, no, 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 no. no but I'm no, arguing no, with no. both of you. I'm arguing with both of you. So I get to say <laughs> double what I gotta say. <laughs> We got to say it twice, God damn. Oh, my goodness. Sid, where you at, man? We waiting for you, Sid. You know what? Hold on. I'm about to call Sid back. That's what man, I'm going to say. Call him. Yeah, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call Sid. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Here we go. I like All it, right. man. This went from a Steve and A conversation about Bronny. Yeah. That, that wasn't way. supposed to happen. <laughs> it happens, man. Welcome to the Four Man Podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Sid. I got you, man. Sorry about that. We were taking other calls, but I wanted to make sure I got you in. Okay. So what you got, man? Thank you for calling. Jesus. Oh, no problem, my brother. Bruce, first of all, I want to say uh, I'm the biggest King James supporter. Me, that okay. Transformer, and my boy Nino. Okay, okay. So when it comes to LeBron, you know, we, we part of the coalition. We own the, we, we own the club play, payroll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you have that, bro. I'm gonna I let like you the fact that you can admit that, Sid. Yeah, Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. So you know he about to go ham. No, in all seriousness, uh, as far as LeBron and Bronny, my son got the same name as me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and I think Stephen A. What he was trying to say, you need to have more compassion for Bronny, not so much as LeBron. LeBron a billionaire. Hell, he needs to take all that, that criticism. You know, if he's saying he wanted the great, then he got he to gotta get it. You know, but Bronny is different when you're a kid. But he's, even though he's 20, you know, I got kids and they made it 20. Mm-hmm. And as a dad, you know, I want the best for him. You know, mm-hmm. I'm 100% VA. And uh, guess what? If my kids could go to school because I'm 100%, I'm not going to tell you to turn the money. Son, you gotta take that money. I think Baby that's girl, a little different. My daughter goes to school no, on that saying. too. I think it's a little different, but go ahead. <laughs> but I'm just saying, as a veteran, mm-hmm. I did things 
so they don't have to. Mm-hmm. If he if he don't have to go in the military and serve and he can get it off me, then I'm a hey, son, get it. And then you work your magic and hustle gets some more money. Same thing for my other child. So I, that's why I don't necessarily, and I agree with you saying, you got to make your kids earn it. You got to make them earn it, and I'm with you on that. But I think what Stephen A. was coming at, like the Kwame Browns of the world, who's going to try to criticize Bronny. Now, Bruce, I don't mind you criticizing, uh, you know, how Bronny's supposed to play. You're, you're, the, you're really a, a journalist, brother. You're a journalist. Mm-hmm. Kwame Brown was a first round draft pick and mm-hmm. he don't have the right or the nerve to, to, to do anything. That's kind of he shot a slug at somebody like him. Why hmm. you gonna get on him and you didn't do nothing on your career? Uh, well, LeBron don't do this and do that. But huh. you was a first round draft pick, brother. So, so when right. those oh. the guys oh. have when those type of guys have those type of opinions, that's what I think Stephen A was kind of nerd nudging at. He ain't on the payroll. You know, we don't, we, Steve, Stephen A ain't part, part of the club like us to uh, transform. <laughs> right. Wink, wink. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Stephen, Stephen A had his pushback with, with Clutch, you know, uh, you know. Yeah. Now said, I think, he, now I think he's trying to get back on the, on their good side, but that's a different thing. No, nah, because he said one positive thing, bro. That no, everybody no, don't no, want to no, be no. part of the club because they say something good, man. Yeah, but, no, that's yeah, come yeah, that's on, man. It. That ain't it. But no, anyway, that's, but that's what it is, Bruce. It's not so much you don't have a descendant of people, but there's a lot of hateful people out there that hate that kid because it's that, and I don't think that's fair. So I this I'll that's say what he was trying to get at. This I'll you say have I have I have said from the beginning with this thing, and these guys can attest to it that I hope Bronny has success. I don't wish yeah. anything bad on him and I want him to be successful. I have no problem with that. I want him to be successful. I just didn't like how it started and that's never going to change. I didn't like how it came about because I thought that he didn't go through the channels he should have to earn that. And then secondly, um, I think that, you know, the, the Lakers, JJ Redick, LeBron, all of them are super disingenuous in how they're presenting this thing. And now they're, uh, you know, they're making it look like anyone who disagrees is hating. And, you know, Stephen A is, uh, it's, it's, it's just, nah, I, I don't, I don't agree with any of this thing, the way it's presented. I don't. Right, right. And, and that's maybe how you got to say. Now, if me and Gino both agree, and you know, we, hey, they got to be right if me and Gino agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, man, I. They got to be right <laughs> You know, I, yeah, I, I know, but I, I get what you said. Everybody's yeah. entitled to hit, everybody get a, a different viewpoint. And mm-hmm. then in the 2016 finals, going back to LeBron, he didn't have a top 75 player of all time. He didn't. I'm just saying, he didn't know, know the fact, you know. I, hey, if we operate the world of facts, I gotta, I gotta bring the facts, hmm. even though I'm a King James supporter. Yeah, check that roster. Yeah. You might be right, though. What? For one game, one game, one game. You might be right. No, that's a that's a series. It wasn't one game. It was it was the championship that he earned. Now you know that he what? I know the guy. Wait, wait. The that championship that he what? That is, Say that again. That's it. That was the championship he won without uh-huh. a top seven five player. Oh, okay, so okay. Oh, oh, yeah. I see what he's saying. He's going My back bad. to back. I'm sorry. My right. Bad. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Yeah, because Kevin Love you know, and Kyrie are, aren't in the top seventy five. Mm. Right, Scotty Pippen. Is. And when I said, and, and, and uh, I made the joke on another uh, guys, I said, man, that Chicago Bulls team, that was a super team. And everybody was like, what? Listen to me now, Bruce. Check I'm listening. Up, up it's time. I, I, I agree with where you're going. Wait a minute. You got MJ, mm-hmm. the greatest guard defender of all time, mm-hmm. top 75. You got Scotty Pippen, top 75. Really, mm-hmm. you know, those top 50. Mm-hmm. You got Ron Harper. I don't know. See, we know history, Bruce. Yeah. Before Ron Harper had some knees, oh, Ron he was Harper a was a bad boy. Yeah, he was. With, with the Cavs. Yep. Yes, he was. Yep. And then you had Dennis Rodman, the greatest, what, power forward defender. Mm-hmm. Man, and, and then throw in Kuko is a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Now, that was a super team, but I could care less. 
they well, won, and I consider that to be one of the greatest teams ever. So, so, so the reason I don't think that's a super team, and I'll, I'll keep it brief because we got to move on to the next topic. The reason I don't see that as a super team is super teams generally, I like to say, three, three, you know, top tier players all in their prime. <laughs> that's generally a super team. Now, if you wanted to argue for those, um, for that Celtics team that came together in 07, 08, okay, I can let you have that, even though they weren't in their primes. Yeah. But generally, it's you know three guys all in their prime. But I, I see what you're saying. But um, Rodman, Rodman was old. You know, yeah, he was still playing defensive rebounder, but he was old. He was past his prime. He was not defensive player of the year, Rodman anymore. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you Scotty, bad back Scotty for that. You know, the last two years of the um the six peat, well not six peat, but the last two years of the second three peat. Um, and I get what you're saying, though. Cool coach went on to be a Hall of Famer. So I, I, I get the argument you're trying to make, but it doesn't really fit the criteria. But I, I, I hear you. Right, right. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. You know, uh, but they wasn't that old, as you would say, because all those guys which came in, you know, Scotty two years after MJ, Dennis mm-hmm. Rodman, all in that, all in that, all in that, uh, prize frame. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. But, um, I'm going to let you go, Sid, because we got to get on to the next topic, man. But I really appreciate Absolutely. you uh, being here. Hey, you hey, you, the LeBron James. Boy, you's a podcaster, a journalist, and, and a veteran, and a real estate guy. Go <laughs> well, ahead, Hope. Try and do something, man. <laughs> try and do something. <laughs> oh, all right, brother. All right, man. You have a good one. You too. All right, man.